my mom was kind of person that just seeing her right in the other day, she has a smile that nobody else on this planet has. She goes, you could, you could be having the most, ex the worst experience and she will come and say something and then she will start the laugh, the smile and the laughter and then all of everybody will join. What kind of relationship do you have with her? With my mom? Very close. Um, you know, my, I'm, I'm one of the last. I have two younger ones, so I spend more time at home from when we return to Lagos than some of my older siblings. So my mom was a, a central person in my life. I I recall when I went to school at Holy Ghost College or whatever. At that time, there wasn't that much good transportation for moving around and and just to get all the documents I needed to be properly enrolled in school, my mom would come and she and I would walk to the courthouses, to the hospitals, to the different places you needed to go to to get all the documents done. And um, I walk and the, the sound of the rapper she, she wore as she moved as she stepped is something that continues to play um, in my mind over the years. My mom was, I know she sewed, she had the sewing institute where she trained people, and then at some point she was, she had the catering institute as well. So all the students that she had knew me. The key thing that you learn from my mom is to, is the, no matter how you try to fashion it, respect for God, um, a deep knowledge of what is right and wrong. That was no, it's not, you know, it was not an option to live in the gray area. You knew that these things were wrong and these things were right, and you strive to to live on the right side of 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 things and um she taught me to fight for what was mine well she would say sometimes if something is yours no matter what challenge anybody put there fight for it do not support something that is wrong just because it is convenient or because it's, it is profitable um and sometimes go out of your way to help those that that, that, that will suffer injustice unless you intervened. And my mom, when she saw you, and she didn't know who you were, the first thing she would ask you is, have you received Christ as your personal savior? If your answer is no, she will immediately begin to minister onto you and try to get you to accept Christ. Um, so, and it didn't matter, it didn't matter, she did not. She just felt that she was, once she received Christ, and what she considered to be the benefit of having done that, she wanted everybody else to, to have it. She was and again. And um, until 1977, when some religious really, um, people brought a crusade to from Enugu to Oware to Irete. And at that time, she she received Christ and was born again. And then she initially was still going to the Anglican church and doing this on the side. And then eventually she decided that for her, her spiritual needs were better served by switching to that new place. And I think that new denomination is no new. It's still in the right and that the that people are called um, Jesus chosen people in the right But at that time they were simply called the Bible Union. I think that gentleman, that's the Michael that testified at the at the homegoing service was one of the one of the preachers that came at the time. And I can say the seven. Some of the triggers that that my mom received, you will see that what people are saying that is that she went, when she went to the United States, and where she lived for almost 31 years, 
all she wanted was for everybody to come. All of her, she wanted all of her siblings to come, all of her extended family members to come. And she was the one that actually personally applied for her children and their and her grandchildren to come. Uh, me, me, me. From the time my brother brought her to the United States, I was in I was in in, in military service at the time that she came, and I took her and, and prepared her for for the, for the green card and the citizenship. Once she became qualified to do that, nothing was more important to her than to bring her. Every, everybody that she could to the United States because she she thought that that was very good life for us. She didn't want anybody to miss out on it. <laughs> and now, uh, you know, even myself, I sometimes I, I I feel like I need to leave this place and come and do other things like go to Nigeria and see how I could help. But my mom thought people should come, come out and come to the U.S. and and for her that was that was, that was the way she saw it, and that's what she tried to do. Them. And now she succeeded to a large extent in bringing almost everybody um, who really wanted mm. from our family, and they are, and, are, and they are all settled in one way or the other. Okay, so what what message do you have for siblings now that your mom is no more? Well, the, 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 the best that the siblings can do a lot of times is to. If you cannot improve upon what the legacy that that your parents left, you at least make sure that nothing gets messed up. Um, so, a lot of my siblings followed my mom into the a new direction in religion, and some of us stayed put where we are. So. Family is very important. I think that I think that family is more important than religion. Um, I happen to believe that it is not possible to be spiritual and worship God honestly and sincerely mm -hmm. if you are fighting the family members, and, I'm, I'm, and I mean your immediate, immediate family members because once you get out of your immediate family members, um, anything is possible. Uh, but with the family members, you have to have peace and you have to have love. And if you don't have it, I doubt that you can truly say that you have a broken God. Um, and for those of us who don't always go out to preach the gospel, the thing that we look for in a family that tells us that God is present there is love and peace. And if we don't find it, we know that. No matter what anybody is saying that we're doing with the Bible, we know that, that it's, it's fake. Mm -hmm. We're going to miss her a lot because, and then over the years, you know, there's some things, I've, since I've been gone from Nigeria for a very long time. 40 years this year, I've been gone. Um, although I've been, I've been visiting also, but it's amazing how if you if somebody called me and I, and they said this is the daughter or the son of this person and it will be a name that I've heard many years ago, I no longer remember exactly how the person fit into the family. You will call her and she'll just give you the history. You know. Almost everything. Even from even from your dad to people like your dad and people like the people from Irete generally and our family members that some of us they don't know whose names we may not remember. She will just tell you. And my mom retained her faculties to the end. So, so her death really, it's like, it's like the loss of a library. We're going to miss her a lot.